Hello, everyone. Welcome to freepilotgroundschool.ca. This is exercise 10 on range and endurance. Prior to this lesson, you should have read the flight training manual uh, on exercise 10. So at the, on the very first lesson, I mentioned that these preparatory ground instructions, uh, some of them are some really important information. You might not use a lot of it, but one time in your career, you may uh, refer back to this and it might be really important. And this lesson is one of those kind of back of the mind uh, lesson that's really important. It's not on your flight test. Your instructor is going to show you once and uh, then hopefully you won't forget it. And so that's what we're going to talk about is flying the aircraft for its best range and its best endurance. Let's begin this lesson with a bit of drag theory. So if you recall from your ground school, we have four forces involved uh, in flight. There's actually many more, but they can be reduced to these four forces, uh, thrust, lift, drag, and weight. And we're going to talk about drag, that uh, force that opposes a thrust caused by the resistance of the air. So we can break down our drag into a number of different drag types of drag. We have parasite drag and induced drag. So let's begin talking about parasite drag. Parasite drag is the sum of profile drag and skin friction. Uh, profile drag is uh, that drag that's formed from uh, the cross section of a body being exposed to a fluid flow. So if you open the window and stick your arm outside with your palm facing forward, uh, maybe you did this as a kid and you, pretty soon you notice that if you weren't paying attention, your arm would smash back against uh, the the window um, post and in your car door. So that would be your profile drag skin friction is just caused by friction of the air molecules interacting with a rough surface. Okay. Uh, this parasite drag is not associated with the production of lift. And parasite drag is proportional to the velocity squared. So you can see on the image here, on the, the y-axis is the drag, and then the x-axis is velocity. And you can see this is essentially a power function. So the parasite drag being proportional to the square of the velocity. By contrast, induced drag is the drag associated with the production of lift. Uh, so from, let's say, wingtip vortices. You cannot have lift without induced drag. Induced drag is proportional to the inverse of the square of the velocities. So you can see uh, the next curve here. As the velocity increases, the induced drag decreases. And we can just add these two drags together, parasite drag and induced drag, and that equals total drag. Now, if we look at this curve here, uh, there is the total drag at the top. And if you're wondering uh, how they got that, uh, this is just basic uh, algebra. So if you were to have uh, this point right here, and then this point right here, and you just look at whatever number this is, let's, let's just say for argument, this is 20, and this is 100 units, could be pounds, newtons, whatever. You add these two together, you would end up with 120. So you do this all along uh, all these lines here okay, and add them all up to, let's say, the parasite drag. And you're going to end up with the total drag. So just uh, basic algebra. So then if we look at this curve, uh, we can see that at a certain point, there is minimum drag and minimum drag you can see the lowest point on this curve okay now just to be clear minimum drag is the lowest point of the curve it's not where these curves intersect they might be close to this point but it's it's not by definition where they intersect it is the lowest point on this curve uh, the minimum drag is also called the lift the maximum lift drag ratio or ld max and uh, since lift is constant at equilibrium, and then of course drag is the, the inverse, that's going to be your lift drag ratio. That uh, is also your best glide ratio. So if you hear uh, this aircraft have a, has an LD max of eight, 
So it uh, that, that would be typical for a Cessna 172. So it produces at a given airspeed, it produces eight times more lift than drag. That would be its glide ratio. So from the drag curve at the top, we can then derive the power curve. So if you recall uh, your dimensions for drag and power, so drag is given in pounds or in SI units, so it will be the Newton. Uh, power would be horsepower or watts. Uh, if we're using SI Newton, a watt is a Newton meter per second. So we need to go from Newtons to Newton meter per second. So we simply multiply that by velocity, velocity being uh, meters per second in SI units. So if we multiply every point on this total drag curve right here by its velocity right here, we'll end up with this power at various points. Okay, so if we look here and we multiply that times that, we're gonna end up with the power required. The lift drag ratio, if we look now how this uh, corresponds, we have the minimum drag uh, is the lowest part on this drag curve right here, but that also equals the tangent line, not the minimum, but the tangent line. If we go from the origin to this curve, it's the tangent line. And I can't exactly explain mathematically why it is, but if some of you are like mathematically inclined, you've taken, vector calculus or you're into engineering or something like that. I believe it has to do something to do with the gradient uh, function if you take the, the gradient of this curve. And uh, but we'll just we'll leave it at that because I, I can't I'm not going to go into a big long mathematical discussion uh, here for this for this uh, lesson here. And uh, the minimum power is right here at the lowest point of the power curve. So the minimum power is on that curve is the minimum power that the aircraft requires to maintain level flight. And if you think about it, minimum power equals minimum fuel flow. And so this will work uh, into our best endurance uh, lesson uh, quite nicely. So let's talk about best endurance. Uh, best endurance is flying the maximum time for the minimum fuel. So this might be, uh, a number of scenarios. It could be the airport's closed and we need to just kind of circle or loiter around the airfield waiting for the airport to open for whatever reason and we don't want to burn any fuel. So we just power back. It, if we look at this drag curve here, so on the x-axis we have velocity and on the y-axis we have drag or thrust required, right? Uh, in equilibrium, drag will be the same as thrust required. Okay. And if we look at it, we have induced drag, which is an exponential function right here, right? And then we have, in, uh, sorry, that's parasite drag is an exponential function. And then we have induced drag. Uh, it's an inverse function right here. Uh, so as we increase our speed, induced drag uh, reaches zero. The zero is the asymptote anyway. Uh, and then when we add these two curves together, here we have our total drag when we add the two together. And at the lowest point, we have our minimum drag. And this will occur at a certain speed. And that speed is going to be our best endurance speed. And so to figure out what our best endurance speed is, what you're going to do is you're going to set your cruise power, and then you're going to reduce the power 100 RPM at a time and allow the speed to stabilize and keep pulling back. And once you are no longer able to maintain altitude, you are no longer um, what we call, we, we end up being on the back side of the power curve where induced drag ends up being too high. And so we would just uh, make sure that we're level uh, and, and go back to the previous power setting, the previous speed. And again, we're going to lean mixture. And this again is called the best, the, the procedure for the best endurance uh, flight. So what is best range? Best range is where you can fly the farthest distance with the least amount of fuel. It is uh, essentially the best lift drag ratio. It's going to be a similar number to your best glide speed, but there's power associated as well. So there's an additional vector there. 
And one of the ways that you can look at your best range is just look at your pilot operating handbook. Uh, take a look in your performance section, and then you can uh, just kind of look through. You can see here uh, at 45% power, let's just say right here, you're going to have your best range. So at sea level, you're going to go your farthest distance, and that's 45% power. We're going to take a look here. So we would say, okay, where's our 45% power? Uh, rough, this would be at 2,000 feet. So that's roughly 45% power, and it's telling you 2,200 RPM. So in this case, uh, we could fly at 2,200 RPM, and we would get our best range. So maybe you've already started your flight training, and uh, you've already taken this lesson with an instructor. And perhaps uh, your instructor said something the same as, my instructor told me, and I told many of my students for many years, that you can also figure out your best range by making a chart in the air. Something that looks like this. And here we have it. Uh, I was always told you make a chart, increase the RPM by 100 RPM, and figure out the speed that the airplane settles on, and wherever the difference is the greatest, that is your best range speed. Unfortunately, uh, this is wrong. This actually figures out your best endurance speed. So, like I mentioned earlier, I used to teach my students this as well until I had a friendly argument with a friend of mine who's a mathematician and a class one flight instructor. We had a public argument over the internet and lo and behold, I lost the argument and he convinced me that I was wrong. So let's look at the next slide here and I'll explain to you why this is wrong. So if you recall this curve here, we have our, our power curve. And so if you think about the chart that I just showed there, take a look on this power curve where you would have the most gain in airspeed with a marginal increase in power. Well, that would be at the flattest part of the curve on the bottom. And well, we know the bottom is the minimum power required. That's going to be your best endurance speed. Really what you'd want to do, and I think this is somewhat, uh, I wouldn't do this in flight, I would just consult the POH. But if you wanted to do this, you'd get out some graph paper, plot data points of your RPM versus your velocity, plot that on the graph paper, and then draw a tangent line from the origin to the curve. And that would technically be your best range speed. But that's probably not worth doing in flight, uh, getting yourself that distracted. So what I recommend you do is that you're just familiar with the best range speed that's given in your POH. Usually it occurs at about 45% power. Just take a look where that is. Memorize that RPM setting. And if you ever need your best range speed, just use uh, that. Let's review the best range speed is uh, the flight with the most miles per gallon of fuel, we can look in the pilot operating handbook, or we can look at the airspeed where the change in power setting, increasing the power setting is the greatest. Best endurance is the most time per gallon of fuel. And to fly at best endurance, we reduce the power to the minimum to sustain a level flight. And of course, it's imperative that you remember to lean the mixture. That concludes this lesson on flight for range and endurance. And uh, I will see you uh, in the next lesson. Thanks for joining me.